to corporate tax incentive and foreign direct investment is the topic we are discussing this morning. Uh, based on my introduction, I said the Nigeria economy is vast and endowed with abundant human and natural resources. This has positioned the country as an investment choice, destination, and return. The federal government has been able to introduce investment incentive to it engender competitiveness and attract investment. The incentives are available in Nigeria can be classified into two. So what this topic is central upon is, what are those tax incentives that we give to attract foreign direct investments? How can we, what incentive can we give to foreign companies, foreign investors? to make them to be coming to Nigeria to come and invest? What are those tax incentives can we give to them? Secondly, the second angle of this uh, topic is for indigenous companies, for companies that are established in Nigeria already, what incentive, what encouragement can we give them so that they will continue to be in operation? They will not divest their investment from Nigeria to other countries. Do you understand? How do we encourage small companies? So all these are corporate tax incentive. What do we understand by tax incentive? Uh, uh, firstly, tax incentive are those special institution, exemption, deduction from income and tax credit offered to a taxpayer by the company as an encouragement to engage in specified activities. Example of tax incentive in Nigeria include capital allowance, investment allowance, loss relief, tax holiday, free, tax free dividends, exemption of interest on certain loan. All these are tax incentive. Even IMF recommend that for, the, for Africa to grow, Africa economy to grow, African, the government within the Africa must be given tax incentive to most of the foreign countries so that it will attract them to come and invest in Africa. And in the long run, it's going to benefit the entire Africa. So objective of tax incentive in Nigeria. Why do we give tax incentive in Nigeria? What are the objective of tax incentive in Nigeria? Number one objective of tax incentive in Nigeria, to attract foreign investment into Nigeria. To attract what? Foreign investment into Nigeria. That is number one objective of tax incentive. Number two, to encourage investment in certain or preferred sector of the economy. Ah, take for instance now, pharmacy, uh, pharmaceutical industry. We are, most of the uh, drugs that we use in Nigeria is being imported into Nigeria. For us to encourage more pharmacy companies to be manufacturing drugs in Nigeria, we can give tax incentive to them that ah, any company you know, established for the purpose of uh, production, manufacturing of drugs, in the next 10 years, they will not pay tax. It's a certain incentive. Or instead of them paying certain amount of tax, we give them free discounts. It's a tax incentive. So, it will encourage them. Again, encourage investment or development in rural area. How do we encourage investment in development in rural area? There are some rural area apart from Lagos. 
Lagos is an urban area. How can we encourage investment in most of the rural area in other states, not only Lagos alone? How can we encourage investment there? By giving tax incentive to them that are, if you go and locate your business in Akwaibo, you will be giving some certain incentive. So if you locate your business in this, you give in incentive. So it will encourage them. Also, encourage export processing zone. There are some companies they are located in export processing zone. Those companies they produce good for manufacturing. They manufacture good. The, the main reason for them manufacture those goods is for them to export the good outside Nigeria. And we know if Nigeria export more, it's going to benefit Nigeria. Because by the time we export good more, we our Naira we appreciate against dollar because we collect more, they will be looking for the, the country that will buy our goods that we export. We'll be looking for our own era. So and they will pay us in dollar. So it will encourage export processing zone. Promotion of export activities too. Tax incentive will promote export activities. Encourage the perpetration of foreign energy to Nigeria. If you earn any foreign energy. Through tax incentive, we can bring it back to Nigeria through approved channel. If you bring it back to Nigeria through approved channel, you are not going to pay tax. Encourage voluntary tax compliance. Tax incentive will also encourage voluntary tax compliance by giving incentive to some company. They would like to comply. They will be filing their return as a 20. Do you understand? Encourage research and development activities. If you give tax incentive to some company engaged in research and development activities, there will be more research and development. There will be more innovation, more idea about production of new products. Accelerate growth of small scale industries. By saying, ah, a company you knows that their turnover is less than 25 million, should not pay company income tax and education tax. It to encourage growth of small scale industry. Most of the small scale industry, they will grow within a period of time. So all these are objective of tax incentive. So all these are objective of what? Task incentive. Now, let's look at abuse or problem of task incentive in Nigeria. Some companies that have been given task incentive, some of them abuse of it. Some of them, they misuse it. What are the abuses by the beneficiary of task incentive policy in Nigeria? Some company that has already been given tax incentive. What abuse that they have made use of this tax incentive? What those abuses that such company have, uh, have made from this tax incentive? Number one, tax incentive can lead to transfer pricing or profit shifting. Transfer pricing or profit shifting. This one applies to multinational companies. Most of the multinational companies, in order not to pay much tax in Nigeria, they will engage in transfer pricing policy. They will say the Nigeria subsidiary render consultant service for them. So they will use that transfer pricing policy to reduce the profit of the Nigeria subsidiary. And they will shift the profit for Nigeria operation to another country that they pay minimum tax or they pay lower tax. So most of these companies that we said they are foreign company, we are giving them tax incentive. In the long run, they normally engage in transfer pricing by saying that they will not want to even pay one naira tax in Nigeria. They will say 
the foreign parent company render service to them in Nigeria. As a result of that, the, the profit of that foreign parent company will be transferred. And the profit of the Nigeria operation will have to be reduced because of that technical service. So they will now pay, they will not even pay tax in Nigeria, or they will just pay <coughs> a, a small tax, a minimal tax in Nigeria. So this is one of the abuses of uh, tax incentive in Nigeria. Diversion number two. Diversion of diversion of property, plant, and equipment acquired. Some company granted incentive. They normally divert the property, plant, and equipment that they acquire in Nigeria. They will divert it to other country. They will move it out from Nigeria to other country. So it's one of the abuses of tax incentive. Second, the third one, on deal request. Some of the company abuse tax incentive by giving, giving by requesting for extension. Say for instance, now, a company is giving tax incentive that are ah, in the next three years, so you will not pay tax. Some of them will be asking for deal requests that are ah, after the expiration of the three years, they will not be asked, please, government, can you just do extension of additional three years again for us? Request that is not even possible, that is going to affect government revenue. They normally ask for that on deal request. Another one. Sure. Yeah. So please, can you explain this diversion of property? I don't really understand it. Diversion of property. Yes, sir. Because this company, they have been giving tax incentive in the era. Hmm? As a result of that, the properties, plant and equipment that are used in other countries, they will divert it to Nigeria so that they can claim capital allowance on it. Do you understand? Say, for instance, some company were given 100% accelerated capital allowance, meaning that they are going to claim 100% capital allowance on property, plant, and equipment. When such companies know the property, plant, and equipment in other countries, they will divert it to Nigeria so that they can claim that accelerated capital allowance. Take for instance, that company in Nigeria presently don't have capital, they don't have proper enough capital, property, plant, and equipment they will go to the other subsidiary company or the parent company. They will go and import the property plant and equipment of the parent company. They will now come and bring it to Nigeria to claim that capital allowance, accelerated capital allowance, so that the profit that they will pay, the tax that they will pay on their profit will be reduced. So that is the version of property, plants, and equipment. Another one. Competitive advantage over existing company. The grant of incentive to some company to place competitive advantage over existing country. What they, are, what they believe is that now we want to attract foreign direct investment. Foreign company come and invest in Nigeria. We give them tax incentive. Ah, 
all these foreign companies you are giving them tax incentive. They will have advantage over the existing company in Nigeria, over the indigenous company in Nigeria. We now we neglect our own local company. We are attracting foreign companies to come and invest in Nigeria because we want to give them tax incentive. This foreign company, we have more competitive advantage over those indigenous companies, those local companies in Nigeria. Because the local companies, we don't give them any incentive. Or the incentive we give them is not, uh, it cannot be compared with that one of the foreign companies. <coughs> so, all this, they are business of what? Corporate tax incentive. Another one, lack of basic infrastructure. We want to attract foreign investment in Nigeria. Do we have the basic infrastructure? All these foreign investment companies, if they come to Nigeria, in the next 10 years, they will go back again. Even after you give them some incentive, they will go back again. Why? Because we don't have electricity. Our, we don't have stable electricity. We don't have good road network. Hmm? We don't we, 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 we don't have an, uh, adequate securities. So by the time they apart from tasks that we give them tax incentive, there are also other basic amenities that we need to put in place so that this foreign direct investment company, foreign company, eh, foreign investor, if they come to Nigeria, apart from giving them a tax incentive, they will stay. Foreign investor, if you give them tax incentive, ah, in the next five years, you don't pay tax. <clears throat> After the expiration of the five years, they are now going to be paying tax. When they are paying tax, they are using this to operate. It will result into a lot of heavy costs on them. There is no good road network for the, assuming the foreign company, they're located in a state far from Lagos State. Do you understand? There is no good rate to network from the state that they located to Lagos State that they will be selling their goods and services. At the end of the day, after the five years, if the company, the, the foreign investor, they will like to move out from Nigeria. They will move out. They will divert their investment from Nigeria because there are other some basic amenities that need to put in place, like electricity, good road network. Uh, proper uh, edge maintenance system, uh, security, good security system. All these have to be put in place apart from task incentive. Another one, government bureaucracies. Government bureaucracies. Most of these task incentives by the time you said, come and come to Nigeria, come and we we'll give you tax incentive. When the company come to Nigeria, you have given them tax incentive. Some of the policy of government will frustrate those foreign investors to move out from Nigeria. Second, take for instance, changing government. One government give a company corporate tax incentive that in the next five years, or in the next six years, you will not pay any tax. By the time, after two years, a new government coming, that new government, they have to, they will say they want to review that incentive, that uh, the, that, uh, the previous government that gives the tax incentive, they did not consider some factors, or uh, they did not uh, follow the proper channels. All these are government bureaucracies. At the end of the day, the foreign investor, they will, they will, they will be the one at the receiving end. And secondly, government bureaucracy means before you can get
So it's going to frustrate the efforts. So please, let's know the abuses of corporate tax incentive. Now, let's now look at the type of SAT tax incentive that we have. Hello, sir. I, can I ask a question, sir? Okay, you can ask. For the company that abuses tax intense uh, incentive, are there penalties for them? Yes, there's penalty for them. There's okay. sanction for them. Yeah. The sanction for this. Now, let's look at type of tax incentive that we have generally. What type of tax incentive do we have generally? Number one tax incentive that we have is tax holiday. Tax holiday. Tax holiday means it's called pioneer legislation. Tax holiday is called what? Pioneer legislation. Pioneer legislation means there are some companies that if they establish in Nigeria, they start manufacturing goods in Nigeria, they are going to improve the economic growth and development of Nigeria. They are going to improve the economic growth and development of Nigeria. So such kind of company, government will give them task holiday. We call those kind of company pioneer company. They will give them task holiday. The law says that such kind of company that will improve economic growth and development of Nigeria, and they want to start manufacturing goods in Nigeria. The essence of this pioneer company is that some most of the goods that we imported in Nigeria, if we now see any company that said, ah, I want to start manufacturing such kind of goods in Nigeria, we will give them tax holiday to encourage them. So the tax holiday that we give a pioneer company is three years. Three years tax holiday. For the three years, the company will not pay tax. Such company, such pioneer company, will not pay tax in the next three years. And after the expiration of the three years, the company can add, apply for extension of additional what? Two years. Such pioneer company, they can apply for extension of what? Additional of two years. Example of pioneer company, textile company, company into in textile industry. We now see a foreign company, they are into textile industry. They now say they will come to Nigeria to come and be producing that textile. By producing, manufacturing that textile, it's going to reduce our importation. It's going to, because most of the textile that we use in Nigeria is being imported into Nigeria. It's going to reduce our importation. So such textile industry is called a pioneer country. And they will be beginning a, they will be given a tax holiday of initial three years plus additional two years upon satisfactory performance. That additional two years is not automatic granted. It's granted upon what? Satisfactory performance. That the three years will give you, do you use it effectively? Do you understand? If you use, if you produce enough good, enough good, you manufacture enough good within that three years, you do not go against your pioneer principal activity within that three years. You can be given additional two years. So, meaning that within that three years, you will not pay any tax. A pioneer company, within three years, they will not pay tax. They will not pay any type of tax. I, I, so, such company, they are called pioneer company. So, the tax holiday, meaning 
an holiday given to a pioneer country to encourage production of goods and services that will promote economic growth and development. Example of such goods and services are textile, rubbers, pharmaceutical products, agricultural uh, products, like production of rice, steel manufacturing. All this, they will be given a task holiday of three years. Initially, for agricultural company, for agricultural company, finance out 2020 said their own. If we want to give agricultural company a pioneer incentive, tax holiday, the tax holiday for pioneer for agricultural company is initial tax holiday of five years. Initial task holiday of five years for agricultural company. If agricultural company want to be given a task holiday, they will be given five years at a glance. They will be given five years at a glance. So, number one task incentive that we have is called task holiday or pioneer legislation. Pioneer legislation or pioneer incentive is given to a pioneer company. And a pioneer company is a company that is established in Nigeria that produce goods and services that will promote economic growth and development of Nigeria. Another one, another task incentive, rural location incentive, rural location incentive. This rural location incentive is given to a company located in the rural area. A company that is located in the rural area, the place that the company is located is at least 20 kilometers far from where there is electricity where there is tight road, where there is water. When the company is located in a rural area that is very far, 20 kilometers 20 kilometer away from where there is electricity, where there is a, a, a pump, a, a tight road, where there is good water network, all this, they will be giving rural location incentive. Number third one that we have <clears throat> is agricultural production incentive. Agricultural production incentive. Companies carrying out agricultural business in Nigeria are exempted from income tax for five years. Upon satisfactory performance, the exemption can be extended to additional how many years? Three years. Any company engaging primary agricultural business, primary agricultural business means rearing of animals. Eh? Plantation of crops. For the first five years, they will not pay tax. Upon satisfactory performance, they will be given additional three years, making eight years. They will not pay company income tax. They will not pay education tax. So, those are the number. That is the number three corporate tax incentive. Number four. Export incentive. Export incentive. 
export incentive. Export incentives are given to a company that is located in the free trade zone. The purpose of this export incentive is to encourage exportations in Nigeria, to encourage exportation, exportation of our raw material that we produce in Nigeria, our goods and services that we produce in Nigeria, so that our GDP can be improved, so that our rest of estate, our Naira can appreciate against dollar. export incentive. Any company located within export, there is a place called export processing zone. Government created a place called export processing zone. So all the company located in export processing zone, they are those companies that produce good for the purpose of exporting those goods out of Nigeria. If a company is located in export processing zone, they will be giving 100% accelerated capital allowance. What that one means is that in a year that the company purchases property, plant, and equipment, they will claim 100% capital allowance in that year on the property, plant, and equipment. They will claim 100% capital allowance in that year on the property, plant, and equipment. <laughs> Aside that, a company located within export processing zone, they will be exempted from tax. They will not pay tax on the good that they export, on the profit derived from the good that they export out of Nigeria. Any company engaged in export processing zone is exempted from tax on the profit derived from the good exported out of Nigeria. Provided that at least 75% of its good manufactured, the good that they manufacture, that export country, is exported out of Nigeria and they are not repatriated back to Nigeria. For an export company, for a company located in export processing zone to be exempted from tax, 75% of the goods that they manufacture in a year must be exported outside Nigeria, and they are not repatriated back to Nigeria. Aside that too, uh, goods exported out of Nigeria are exempted from value added tax. Goods exported out of Nigeria are exempted from what? Value added tax. So now let's now look still on this export processing zone, export incentive. Let's look at incentive available to a company located in export processing zone. Number one incentive is tax on the day relief. Profit of any company in respect of the good exported from Nigeria are exempted from tax. I mentioned that. If your good is exported out of Nigeria, the profit you derive from that good exported out of Nigeria, at least 75% of that your good you manufacture in Nigeria must be exported outside Nigeria. And profit you derive from that, you know, that good will be exempted from tax. So,
Secondly, the profit derived from the goods by export company from the one that they sell within Nigeria. That's true. Will we'll be exempted yeah. from tax. Exempted from tax. Yeah. I can hear you. So what about companies that are into exportation more that are not located in the export processing zones? They are into exportation. Yes, they sir. are not located in the export. If a company is not located in the export processing zone, they are into exportation. Their profit in the next three years, for the first three years of operation, will be exempted from tax. Do you understand? This yes, is the B part now. Profit of an undertaking within an outside export processing zone shall be exempted from tax for the first three consecutive, consecutive years of assessment. The profit shall be exempted from tax in the next in the first three years of operation. Provided that the following condition occur. Number one condition, they are wholly export-oriented company. Number two, the undertaking is not formally split or reconstructing from, from the undertaking is not from, from by splitting or reconstructing an existing business. What this one is saying now, that export processing zone is not a company that has been in operation before, they now converted to export processing zone. No, if a company wants to be an export company, they must establish them at the beginning as an export company. An existing company that is not an export company cannot set in the long run he want to convert his operation to an export company. It's not allowed. Do you understand? The third one, 70% of the good that they export, their exportation must be 70%, at least 70% of their turnover, 75% of their turnover, sorry. 75% of their turnover. So, and another thing that we need to understand in this export processing zone is for export processing zone company, the structure of their capital, the authorized share capital, it can be owned by foreign investor, foreign ownership, 100% foreign ownership. Meaning that the 100% capital of export processing zone company can be owned by foreigner. Another incentive that we need to talk about for this export processing zone is interest on loan granted by bank for manufacturing goods for exports shall be exempted from tax. When we are doing taxation of specialized business, on that addition of bank, you mentioned this too. If a bank gives export pro, export company a loan, such kind of loan shall provide the pass on condition. Yes, so when the interest or loan granted to manufacturing companies, right, are exempted from tax, is it the bank that is benefiting or the company? It's the bank, it's not the company. It's the bank. So sir, is, can we call that incentive to the company since it's the bank that is benefiting and not the company? It's an incentive to banks too. Is it not an incentive to banks? Okay, to banks, okay. It's an incentive to bank. 
A part of that, all export goods and services are what? VAT exempted. When you export goods and services, you will not add VAT to it. All the goods and services that you manufacture in Nigeria, you now export it outside Nigeria. When you want to sell it outside Nigeria, you will not add VAT to it. Another incentive is under export processing zone, dividend received from investment. The shareholder of export processing zone company, export company, the shareholder, if they receive dividend, such kind of dividend are tax exempted. They will not deduct withholding tax on the dividend. The shareholder will not pay any tax on the dividend. So those are the incentive for company in export business, for company engaged in export activities, either located in export processing zone or outside the export processing zone. So the next thing, requirements for location of business in free trade zone. For you to locate your business in export processing zone, what are the requirements? You need to complete an application form. Eh? And you need to pay a non-refundable fee of $500. Upon submitting your application form, you submit your application form to Nigeria Export Processing Zone Agency. You submit it to the headquarters in Abuja. Upon submission, they will review it. And once they review it, <coughs> any observation that they get from the review will be communicated to you within five working days. So from their review, from their review, if your approval is now, uh, if they didn't have any uh, observation in your application, they will give you an approval, operating license to operate. So they will give you an approval to operate. And from that, you now be showing them your activities every year. You'll be showing them how you operate your activity, You're submitting a report to them. Now, Let's look at list of company, list of free trade zone or export processing zone that we have in Nigeria. List of export processing zone that we have in Nigeria. Number one is we have a Calabar free trade zone. Calabar free trade zone. That one is owned by federal government. It's located in Cross River. Most of the goods that they manufacture in that place is oil and logistic service. <coughs> we have Kano Free Trade Zone too. It's owned by federal government. We also have the one owned by federal government we have a, we have another one called um, Ascon Export Processing Zone, Aquaibo. So they normally manufacture goods. Apart from the own owned by Vedra government, some states too have their own export processing zone. Why private investors too have their own 
export processing zone. So those are the list of export processing zone that we have in Nigeria. For the recap, we are discussing tax incentive. We have mentioned three tax incentive. The first one we mentioned is tax holiday, which is pioneer legislation. Why the second one we mentioned is rural location incentive. Why the third one that we mentioned is agricultural production income tax exemption. The fourth one that we mentioned is export incentive, which we discuss it, which we have discussed more, more of it. The fifth one now is export expansion grants scheme. That is the fifth number five tax incentive that we have. Export expansion grant grant scheme. Export and expansion grant scheme. They are the incentive used to settle all federal government taxes, such as value added tax, withholding tax, company income tax. It can be used to purchase government bond and repay government credit facilities. Debt due to an asset, due to the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria. So those are the expert expansion grant scheme. Apart from export expansion grant scheme, number six tax incentive that we have is called gas utilization incentive. Gas utilization incentive. This one is given to downstream oil and gas company. It's given to downstream oil and gas company. Any company that engage in the, we call them a liquidified a natural gas, LNG. They are giving gas utilization incentive. Any company that engage in liquefied natural gas, <coughs> LNG, they are giving gas utilization incentive. So what are the incentives under this gas utilization? For a company engaging in liquefied natural gas, the following incentive will be given to them. They will be given initial tax holiday of three years. Three years. Initial tax holiday of three years. Meaning within three years, they will not pay tax. Upon satisfactory performance, they can be given additional two years. Number two incentive, accelerated capital allowance. The annual allowance will be 90%. Anytime they purchase qualified capital expenditure, either plant and equipment, plant and machinery, furniture and fitting, motor vehicle, they will be given 90% annual allowance. Why 10% retention for investment in plant and machinery? 10% retention means 10% investment allowance. Apart from that, they will also be given additional investment allowance of 15%. Aside from that, 
for a country engaged in gas utilization, liquefied natural gases, another incentive that will be given to them is the dividend paid by such company. Dividend paid by such company, or dividend received by a company engaged in liquefied natural gas from their foreign investment will be exempted from tax. Dividend received by liquefied natural gas, company engaged in tax utilization incentive from their foreign investment eh, will be exempted from what? Tax. Provided that that investment constitutes not less than 30% of their equity capital. Provided that that investment constitutes not less than 30% of their equity capital. So, such kind of company, they will be giving tax incentive. Apart from that, Interest on loan obtained by gas utilization company, liquefied natural gas company. Interest on loan that they obtained from bank. Some kind of interest on loan is not subjected to tax. So apart from gas utilization incentive, another incentive that we have is tourism incentive. Incentive given to a tourism company. Incentive given to a tourism company. 25% of income derived by a tourism company. Tourism company means hotel and hospitality industry. 25% of income derived by tourism company are exempted from tax. Provided that such kind of profits, they are used within five years for construction or expansion of new hotel and other facility for tourism investments. What we are saying now is if an hotel and hospitality industry derive a profit, 25% of the profit shall be exempted from tax. If such hotel and hospitality industry use that profit within the next five years for construction of new hotel or other facility for tourism, 25% of the amount will be exempted from tax. Twenty five percent of it will be exempted from tax. Income derived by tourism, twenty five percent of it shall be exempted from tax. If they use the profits within the next five years, sure, of new hotel or other facility for tourism development. So that is for tourism incentive.
Solid mineral industry incentive. Solid mineral industry incentive. A company engaged in solid mineral are uh, exempted for tasks for the first three years of operation. A company engaged in solid mineral, they are exempted from tax for the first three years of operation. Example of a company engaged in solid media is mining of goods, silvers, other mineral resources, extraction of wood, silver, other mineral resources, production of steel and metals. They are still under solid mineral. For a small company engaged in solid mineral, there will be access to tax on profit at the rate of 20% for a period of five years of assessment. So those are the number eight that we have. Apart from that, we have interest incentive. Interest what? Incentive. Interest incentive is given to a bank. There are some interests of a bank that will be exempted from what? Tax. Example, if a bank gives interest for agricultural business, some kind of interest will be exempted from tax. Provided that the moratorium period is not less than 12 months. Another one, if a bank gives manufacturing goods for export a loan, such kind of loan shall be exempted from tax. Provided that the certificate of export is obtained by the company and 50% of the good manufactured by the company is not re-exported back to Nigeria. So that is interest incentive. The last incentive that we have is research and development company, incentive given to a research and development company. When a company engages in research and development for commercial purpose, they will be given 20% incentive on their qualified capital expenditure. When a company engages in research and development for commercial purpose, they will be given 20% incentive on their qualified capital expenditures. Aside that, donations made to a research and development company shall be exempt. Provided that if any company make donation to a research and development company, such donation is exempted from tax, provided that the donation is not more than 10% of the total profit before deduction. Provided that such donation is not more than 10% of the total profit before deduction. So donation made to a research and development company is also exempted from tax. Five minutes.
出门这样So that is number 10 tax incentive. Incentive for the fashion and development company. Now, we call the topic corporate tax incentive and foreign direct investment. What do we understand by foreign direct investment? The mechanism through which foreign direct investment impact on the economy is the capital market. Foreign direct investment means the rate of foreign, the total value of foreign investments in Nigeria. Foreign direct investment. So in this case, let's look at measures put in place by government to attract foreign direct investment. What are those measurements put in place by government to attract foreign direct investment? Number one, by giving tax holiday. If they give tax holiday, pioneer legislation, there will be more foreign direct investment. Number two, accelerated capital allowance. By giving the accelerated capital allowance, more foreigners will come into Nigeria. Joint venture. Joint venture. This one is common in a petroleum profit tax. By signing joint venture arrangement between foreign company and Nigeria government, they go into joint venture for extraction of crude oil. It will attract foreign direct investment. Another thing that can attract foreign direct investment is pro production sharing contracts. Production sharing contracts. This one too is common under petroleum profit tax, oil and gas, upstream production sharing contracts. All the oil work that they used to extract crude oil. The landlord of oil work is federal government through NMPC, is NMPC through federal government. Federal government appoints NMPC to be the custodian of all the oil work. So in Nigeria, nobody can say I'm the owner of oil work. All the oil work that you used to extract crude oil in Nigeria is owned by Federal government and NFC oversee it on behalf of federal government. So production sharing contract means some uh, uh, IOC, independent uh, oil company, international oil company, like Shell, Chevron, Mobi. They can go in gate, they can go into production sharing contract with NMPC. By saying NMPC, we have discovered oil in this area, in this place. What we do now is you don't need to bring any fund. We are the one that will bring fund. We are the one that will bring in equipment. We are the one that will carry out survey. We are the one that will spend any more all the fund that is necessary for extraction of this good oil. After we extract the crude oil, assuming we extract 1,000 barrels of crude oil, out of the 1,000, we, because of we are the one that invest our fund, we take 
you, the landlord, you take 30%. You do not bring any fund. And without us, without us bringing our own equipment and uh, extracting the oil, you cannot get any tool. So they share the crude oil between the landlord and the IOC. Another thing that can attract foreign direct investment is investment allowance. Investment allowance. By giving investment allowance to some of the asset acquired by this foreign company, it will attract them to come and invest in Nigeria because at the end of the day, it's going to increase their capital allowance. Another thing that can attract foreign investment is export processing zone. By creating export processing zone or free trade zone that any foreign company that come and establish in Nigeria that manufacture goods, they will be located in this zone. And in this zone, they will not pay any type of, any type of taxes and levy at all. And they will even be protected by government. And government will also help them to facilitate the export of goods and services. And the material that they use, they import to produce that goods and services will be free. They will not pay custom duties on it. So far, they're bringing it into free trade zone. Exemption from minimum tax. By exempting some company from minimum tax, a company with at least 25% imported equity shall be exempted from minimum tax. A company with at least 25% imported equity shall be exempted from what? Minimum tax. It will attract foreign direct investment. Ownership in mining industry. Government can encourage 100% foreign ownership in mining operation by saying, foreigner, come and own Yes, come and establish a mining company in Nigeria. And if you want to have the share, it will be 100% ownership. We not said at least maybe 25% more owned by local investors. No, 100%. It will attract foreign direct investment. So all these are measurements put in place to attract foreign direct investments. Another thing that we should look at is task policy measures the government can take to expand non-oil tax revenue. The measures that government can put in place to expand non-oil tax revenue. Non-oil. What policy measure can government can put in place to expand non-oil tax revenue? Number one, in the area of agriculture, they promote agriculture. They need to promote agriculture by giving some agricultural company loan. Give them special loan. Give them a tax incentive. It will attract area of agriculture. So we're not, we not be depending on oil only. 
it will expand agricultural areas too. Another one, manufacturing, in terms of manufacturing industries. Transport, repair of major roads. If government repair major roads, construction of railway system, improve aviation transport. All this we attract non oil tax revenue. Registration of business name. Government can do free registration of business name to small companies. By that time, more come and if they register the business name, they will give them team number automatically. There will be more company in the task net. Aside that, confirmation of task clearance certificates. More task clearance, they, they need to be giving company task clearance certificates as a means of bidding for contracts. As a means of bidding for contracts. So all this we attract non oil tax revenue. All this is going to attract non oil tax revenue. Now let's look at a question. Let's look at this question too. Nigeria government usually grants relief to investors to encourage them to shift focus to less fascinating or capital intensive industry by granting incentives such as tax holiday, duty free to attract investors in export processing zone. Thereby improve standard of living of our citizens. Required, what is tax relief granted to export processing zone inside or outside export processing zone? Secondly, states five associated conditions for granting for the granting of the relief. The B part, what are the tax relief granted to a manufacturing company whose product are approved by government and established inside export processing zone? So A part of the question said, What is the task relief granted to a company, to an export-oriented company inside or outside export processing zone? The profit or gain of an export-oriented company located inside or outside exporting zone, export processing zone are fully exempted from tax for the first three consecutive years on the condition that YDP condition for granting incentive, five associated condition. What are the conditions? The company is 100% export oriented company. The company produce or manufacture an export during the year and the export proceeds during the year is not less than what? 75% of the turnover for that year. Number third condition. The company is using 
brand, new plants and machinery. But if using plant and machinery previously used, the cost of acquisition shall should not exceed 25% of the total value of the plant and machinery in the book. Number third condition. The company is a newly incorporated company. That is, it is not a result from breakup or reconstruction of an existing company. Number next, the company repatriated at least 25%, 75% of its any from export back to Nigeria. Meaning that the profit derived from the company from exportation of the goods outside Nigeria, they repatriated back to Nigeria. So that is that. Now, the B part of the question, what are the tax relief granted to a manufacturing company whose products are approved by government and they are established in export processing zone? The company shall enjoy 100% capital allowance on building and equipment in any year of assessment. The incentive, which remains so long as the company product are approved by government and does not cover motor vehicle, furniture and fitting, furniture and fitting features. All company engaging government approved activities within export processing zone from federal, state, local government taxes are exempted from federal, state, local government taxes, including rates and levy with no time limit. So, that is that question two. Question three said, we should, what are the tax incentives for company operate in export processing zone? Is still somehow relating to question two. Interest on loan granted by company for manufacturing good for export is exempted from tax. It's one number one tax incentive. Number two, hundred percent capital allowance is granted for qualified capital expenditure on building plants and equipment in an approved manufacturing activity of export processing zone. Number three, all exported goods and services are exempted from VAT. Dividends received from investment in wooly export processing zone are tax exempted. Profit derived, profit of any company in respect of the good exported from Nigeria are exempted from tax if the proceeds are interpreted to Nigeria. So those are the incentives given to export-oriented 
industries located in export processing zone. Do we have any questions, any observations? So I have a question. Okay. Maybe a little away from uh, what we thought today, right? But I need a kind of clarification. When you talk about withholding tax on dividends of, uh, of shareholders being exempted from um, tax, right? The dividend of shareholders being exempted from tax. My question is that, is it like, after the, the end of the year profits of the business, the profits won't be taxed. Uh, ask your question again, I didn't understand. Okay, so, okay, I, like, if we are saying that this dividend paid to shareholders are exempted from tax, does it mean that the profit of the company for that year is not taxed? Or is, 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 is there something like double taxation? Since this uh, profit is being taxed um, in the company's hand before the distribution of dividends, then the dividends will, the dividends will also be taxed again. If you say dividend received by shareholder is not going to be taxed because the profit before they distribute the dividend has been subjected to tax in the hand of the company. That is the reason why the dividend is not subjected to tax in the hand of the shareholder. Dividend received by shareholder is called frank investment income. Income that has been subjected to tax at source. It cannot be subjected to tax again in the hand of the receiver. So, sir, which, which is the withholding tax now? The withholding tax on dividends. Is it that tax paid by the company? No. On the profit? The withholding tax on dividends is treated as frank investment income. The withholding tax is the one deducted by the company before paying the dividend to shareholder. Do you understand? Not really, sir. Okay. Withholding tax. If there is a withholding tax on dividend, it means that company want to deduct the dividend, want to deduct withholding tax on the dividend before paying the dividend to the shareholder. That kind of withholding tax is exempted. The, they have to refund the shareholder back. It's not subjected to tax. Do you understand? <laughs> Do you understand? Maybe, maybe I would uh, private chat to you, so I don't, I'm not really clear. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Uh, thank you, sir. Any other question? Any other question? Is that an observation? Okay, what is the observation? I remember we, we started um, specialized companies, this thing, um, tax, right? It's, yeah. And we've not concluded that. Meanwhile, we've treated like two other topics. So I don't know if you are forgetting about that, just to remind you. In this area, we have not completed in the specialized That's business. We've not done insurance company. We okay. did only bank, yes, sir. We've not done insurance company. Which yes. other area? Part of the insurance company. You don't need to go Thank you.
case, I would not done the unit trust business and, and pension fund. They would done for real estate. I think it's insurance companies and then unit trust business. Okay, okay. We will look at insurance company by next week. I'm, I'm aware of that. I know. I've not done insurance. So uh, we will look at insurance by next week. Feeling. All right. Any other questions? So please, let's pay more attention to this corporate tax incentive and foreign direct investment. Let's read this topic very well. And in case we have any question, please let us know. This is one of the important topic that I can normally set. And it has been like uh, four or five times that they said question of this. So some of the uh, assessor for advanced tasks, they are emphasizing that this diet, a question of tax incentive may come out. Do we understand? Yes, sir. Please, let's read more on this uh, corporate tax incentive. Any other question? So in the absence of most question, we can, uh, for today, our lecture ends by 10, Abby. Yes, sir. Okay, we can call it a day, so by, huh? Our lecture ends by 10? Yes, sir. Okay, so we can call it a day, in the absence of no question. So by next week, we do insurance, and we also do, transition of merger and acquisition. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir.